just the two last short things that uh, we would like to touch upon. Uh, the first one, what what is your view how the industry overall could uh, improve uh, winter navigation and, and operations in, in, in cold climate or, or freezing temperatures? If you, Thomas, go first and... Oh, now, now, now you give a, a, a tricky question. I, well, uh, in my opinion, the, the cooperation between, between Sweden and Finland with the icebreakers and, and then also the new uh, press release uh, uh, a week or two ago about uh, further development of, of designing new icebreakers for, for this area. I mean, this, is, this has proven to be working well and all icebreakers here in, in, in Scandinavia are, are doing a good job. So uh, my point of view would be to, again, sell this knowledge and let's try to expand that and, and let that be our strong side in, in the maritime business. So from, from local to more global. Definitely, yes. Thank you. Uh, Stan, uh, Niklas, do you, do you have any, any take on this? What, what the industri industry could do and improve? Uh, well, I think it's a, it's a quite a broad question so because if you are trading in, in uh, icy conditions and up in the north, you, you really need need to, to, let's say, consider many actors in, in this navigation. For instance, we have uh, we are using a service from, from the Meteorological Institute, FME, from Ilmanet, and, and they have really good tailor-made uh, services just for, for ice navigation, and they can do the forecasting and so on. And so I think you, you, there are many, many different, uh, different actors who are, are involved in this. And as Thomas said, uh, as long as we can, let's say, develop and, and cooperate. I think we can keep keep the, the service and, and uh, industry moving ahead, which is important. Thank you. It, it, it doesn't need to be so complicated when you when you build ships. It, it's it's easy. There's quite simple measures where you can avoid uh, expensive damages. Hasse talked about the damage rather they reversed in ice and then uh, the rudder was damaged. It's very easy to forget when you are, you have a lot of things that you, you consider when you, you navigate in ice. I was on a ship where you had a, a switch and the rudder was in winter mode. So as soon as you your engine worked to stern, the rudder went midships. And I can't remember how much that cost, but it's it's a question of, about the switch and, and of course a little bit more behind that, but it's it's not very expensive equipment or equi compared with a damaged strutter. Uh, so when you build your ships uh, for going in ice, then and I'm sure for quite some cheap money you, you can make it uh, safer to operate. Thank you, Nicholas. And uh, Hasse, do you do you have a uh, some industry advice? I don't know if I have an industry advice as such, but I would say that the polar code uh, brings with it quite a lot of uh, uh, sharing of experience through all kinds of organizations, uh, PAME, ICS, uh, uh, Transport Canada. All of those uh, contribute with uh, with the instructions and uh, uh, whatever. So through that, I think we will see uh, an improvement in, uh, in uh, especially the polar areas. Uh, in a way, it's sad that uh, the Baltic was not included in the polar area, uh, but uh, because now it's kind of a, a bit on the side. And also from both the views, uh, the experience uh, shared in uh, these uh, polar code forums is perhaps not uh, very well taken on board here and vice versa. And also the experience that you gain in the Baltic is not reckoned in the polar code. But uh, yeah, I think that will to some extent uh, force improvement as well. 
Okay, thank you. Col collaboration through the, the in international bodies and, and, and the col collaboration uh, possibilities. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I think uh, I would like to hand the mic to, to Johanna. Do we have lots of questions in the chat for, to, for the panel? So you I think Johanna, you're muted. Sorry, <laughs> hope you can hear me now. Uh, not a lot of comments uh, or questions, but uh, one uh, comment we got, and uh, I'm going to um, to read it for you. Uh, it is one of our listeners that commented that we have actually different types of ice in Baltic, the Arctic and the Antarctic areas. My experience as officer and master of 15 years or more in the Baltic did not much really help me down in Antarctica uh, or the Greenland ice. It's a different problem with growlers and catabatic winds with poor or even no ice radars. Uh, in the Baltic, you have an ice field the other areas open ice and multi-year hard ice in the future need to get the officers to specialize or get the area information better it was a long comment but it, uh, it was a great one i think yeah i would say that it's it's uh, true that the ice is different uh, there are similarities uh, and you can of course, uh, use the experience from the Baltic in the polar to some extent. So at least you have more experience if you are born here in Finland than somebody born in Central Africa, uh, hands-on experience. But yes, uh, you have to, to uh, uh, take into consideration the local, uh, local ice conditions uh, uh, remains to be seen if we in the uh, Arctic uh, will see only one year ice in the future, but uh, that's another story. Okay, I would like to uh, challenge and or ask you then a little bit. I think you are familiar with uh, the icebergs and growlers around uh, Newfoundland, uh, tail of the bank. Uh, any any experience you'd like to share from that area? I think it's. Uh, close to this comment that it's, it's different and it especially poor visibility nighttime some uh, swell uh, wind waves and and you have mixed mixed with growlers it's it's impossible to see it's any anything you would like to share on, on that perspective uh, there are navigation warnings of course from uh, from uh, uh, the American side and Canada and so on, where you have the iceberg areas clearly marked on charts, and the, those areas, of course, you you need to avoid. And I think many many ocean-going ships today are using different weather routing services, etc. And and of course, these iceberg warning areas are, are let's say, automatically included. Uh, so. Uh, I, I think that most most uh, officers and captains are aware of this. And I remember clearly one one uh, one uh, instance where we approached to to Halifax, Canada, and about 12 hours before we passed the so-called Saint Lawrence Deep Channel coming out from from Bay of Saint Lawrence, and it was very dense ice, but very loose loose pieces of ice, and with a regular cargo roro vessel there we, we pass through without any problem but you have to be careful of course and go slow and take it easy yeah thank you uh, i think the, the last sentence in, in in the comment is that in the future need to get the officers to specialize or get the area information better uh, what is the panel's view do you think the uh, the expedition cruises, for example, uh, are going to get so popular that we are going to see both in the north and south uh, better information services. Uh, I think the 
the situation today is that in in, in what we are discussing and and the, the the big major global trade lanes they they're well informed and 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 there's a big big interest like as they mentioned the canadian and american services then we have the european then we have the scandinavian the nordic but uh, what, what do you think uh, are we going to get better area information or do, how, how do you perceive this expedition uh, the polar expedition cruise industry do, do you think that that would be something that uh, the information and, and infrastructure infrastructure in that respect will will improve I can see that it, it will improve because now we, we talk about companies that really need new areas to go to and they, they work really hard on safety and the other thing is that they cannot for their business afford any accidents and, uh, and I think that they will work hard where it's going I cannot say at the moment and I haven't been there myself so I can't say but but what I know is that these companies they are working really safely and, and really putting all in to make it safe for the ships and passengers to and the crew to be there. Okay, thank you Nicholas. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, taken two ships uh, along the northeast uh, passage Hagan Week when they were built and um, then we have uh, regularly been up to Sabetta and uh, also to Baffin Island. And I would say that the ice information is uh, pretty good uh, these days. I think where we might lack uh, a bit of um, information and which is a danger is uh, growlers and multi year ice, which is uh, not yet so well uh, uh, identified through the, through the ice service um, providers, but uh, they are apparently working on their methodology all the time. So. Yes, it, it will. It will improve. It's relatively good already, both on the Russian and Canadian side. Okay, thank you. That's comforting to hear uh, uh, that yeah. it's it's improving on on both sides, the east and west.